Hi everyone, I'm Stephen Nicola Ole and I'll be giving a talk on Streamlit, the fastest way to build data apps. Believe me, I'm so much excited to be here at PyCon APAC 2021. All right, so in this talk, we'll be discussing um, our problem statement, why we need a Streamlit at all. And then afterwards, you know, we'll, we'll talk about uh, what Streamlit is about and uh, uh, what makes it unique. And then we'll move on to the installation process and play around with the demo. And afterwards, we'll be building a data app where we get to see the uh, building blocks of Streamlit. And then we'll be having a sneak peek at different use cases of Streamlit. And finally, we'll uh, check out the reasons why Streamlit might not be the best solution you know, to um, all data apps or all web apps problem out there. All right, let's get started. So first of all, my profile, um, an ML researcher, a uh, research engineer, yeah, uh, currently looking for my next gig. <laughs> and um, I consider my, so, so, uh, my skill set to be somewhere in the intersection between software engineering and machine learning. And um, I'm a Liverpool FC fan since I, I've been a kid. I'm a Python freak. I use Python for almost everything I do, for research, for for data science, for web development, you know, for the back end. And then, uh, yeah, finally, I'm a foodie, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, so it was our problem statement. If you're familiar with the usual process of building a data-driven web app, the usual process is that you, first of all, um, carry out analysis, reprocessing your data in notebooks, right? And afterwards, say you want to share your findings with uh, your colleagues, then you could copy and paste the relevant functions in the Python script, right? And say you want to, you know, let it reach a wider audience, then you could create a web app using Flask. And if you're creating a web app with Flask, that means you need to turn to the front end and uh, you need to make use of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and maybe a framework, you know, to, um, to have uh, a functional web app, maybe, right? Uh, now let's say that you are in a, uh, you are in a, in a large organization that has a dedicated software engineering team. So that means you don't really need to build this app yourself, right? So you could outline your requirements and scope out the UI UX designing, and then, you know, um, describe it to the uh, software engineering team. And then the engineering team could create a state of the heart app for you. And the team lead will probably tell you, hey boss, you know, um, we have a lot we are working on, so we would only be able to carry out updates on your app periodically. Okay, um, now this leads us to our, our, our pain points. The first pain point is that depending on the software engineering team takes up a bunch of our time, right? And we can't create new features and updates on a whim because we need to wait on the software development team. Uh, and usually the software development team is always, is, is always busy, right? And we could, you know, go through the pains of trying to create these apps ourselves. But the number one reason is that we are not particularly artsy, right? And we suck at UI designs. And also, creating a web app cons consumes a quite, you know, um, a, a quite a humongous amount of time. I mean, and then, you know, you need to learn how to use flags. You need to bother with JavaScript, with HTML, with uh, CSS and likes. And, uh, all these things do take up, you know, quite a, um, quite a, you know, um, amount of time. And then most of us, we prefer to use our codes to generate insights or build model. We would rather not use that, um, use our code, you know, to uh, provide user with uh, a pleasant experience on our web app. And that leads us to this million dollar question. What if we could build apps as easily as writing Python scripts? And that leads us to Streamlit. So what is Streamlit? Streamlit is, is all about building apps as easily as writing Python scripts. Say you have a you have a you have a Python script, you sprinkle in a few API call, and then you go over to your browser, you know, to check out your performance web app. You're just writing Python. You are not bothered with HTML, with CSS, with JavaScript, or or you know any of the or uh, any of the other tools that you need, you know, to build a functional website. And also it covers most UIs used in data apps. I mean, you want to have a slide bar, you want to have a, 
you want to have a chart side by side, you want to uh, have a slider, a radio button, a checkbox, all these things, you know, uh, you just need a single line of code for them. And I'm not so sure, you know, you could do something like that uh, that easily if you're making use of Flask and JavaScript for building your web app. And then it also supports multiple interaction visualization libraries. Say you want to make use of Plotly or Bucket or Atai or Matplotly in your code or in your website. Still needs to support all these libraries out of the box. You don't need to, you know, um, install any additional uh, additional tool or library, you know, to take care of that. All right. So let's move on to the installation of Streamlit. So for us to install Streamlit, it's as easy as installing any Python library. All you need to do is pip install Streamlit. And once you've been able to do that, you could try Streamlit Hello, you know, which is going to spin up this on your browser. I'm going to try out that for you. So I'm going to type Streamlit Hello. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we have that on our browser. And then, uh, yeah, so looking at this, uh, it's welcoming me to Streamlit and then um, I could select, you know, any of the demo over here, I will select the plotting demo. And what we have here is a, is a plotting and animation, you know, uh, demo. And I think uh, this is quite cool. Let's look at how many lines of code were used for that. Uh, now we have uh, about, I don't know, maybe 15 lines of code. To, uh, to print that out. And I think that's quite impressive. So let's check out another. All right, so this is an animation, you know, um, demo. Then um, I think it's quite cool because you could, you could, you know, you could uh, play around with the slider. You could try out a lot of different stuff, right? And then I, I think it's quite cool for that. So let, looking at the line of codes, yeah, we have, um, maybe 15 lines of code again, you know, for this. I think that's quite cool. All right, moving on. I'm going to stop this. So having installed Streamlit, uh, I'm going to walk you through the process of building a data app. So if you say you want to build a data app, the first thing you need to do is to import Streamlit as ST, right? And then you could now write um, ST.Site, you know, hello world. So if you want your hello.py script, you are going to have this on your browser. Um, let me show you um, an example of this. So in here, I have an hello.py. I have a uh, distro.py. All right, this is my this is my hello.py, and uh, uh, this is all I need to do. And then this is just everything I'm writing, and I could come back here and try. Streamlit's on hello.py, right? But I'm not going to do that. Let's check out the uh, distro.py instance. Looking at the distro.py, the inspiration behind it was that I think about a year ago, a younger sister of mine was, you know, learning data science. And um, I feel it would be cool if, <laughs> if, if she could interact, you know, with uh, what she's been reading in the textbook with a little bit of descriptive statistics. Right. So what this line, uh, this line of code is doing, these lines of code are doing is uh, checking. Let's check them out. Let's run to them one by one. The first line is simply importing Streamlit as ST. The second line is importing NumPy, which is a uh, numerical computation library in Python, you know, as NP. Now we are writing a title known as distribution tester. Then we're writing a line, right? A line of text pick a distribution from the list and blah, blah, blah. And now we are having keys. And keys is a, uh, is a list containing normal and uniform. And afterwards, we are having this key, which is a select box. And we are passing in, and we are passing in, um, we are passing in keys, you know, which is a list um, as option to our select box, which means uh, whoever is using our app will be able to select either normal or uniform. Now, if the user selects normal, so we want norms to be a randomly generated number within the range of zero to 1,000, right? But if the key selected is uniform, so we want to have an array of numbers, you know, within the range of 
one to one hundred uh, within the range of one to one thousand. And finally, we are we are you know plotting a line chart of of the norms, right? So I'm going to go over to my uh, terminal and I run that um, I run that um, script right now. Okay, yeah. All right, so it's spinning off. So we have it. You can see the title. You can see the uh, line of text, and then you can see you know the uh, the select box, right? Now it's on normal, and uh, we are having this chart from normal. See, I select another. Uh, okay, yeah. You can see that the chart is different, and I think this is very cool because we did this in just this seven, seven or eight lines of code, and I think this is quite impressive. Yeah. All right. So uh, moving on. So let's have a little, let's have a sneak peek at the different use cases of Streamlit. Um, so the first one I will show you is, uh, is a Streamlit demo, you know, that lets you perform semantic search across the entire Uda City self-driving car photo data set. And it's on a complete neural net YOLO in real time, you know, from within the app in less than 300 lines of code. I think this is quite amazing. And um, if you want to check this out, I have the link somewhere here um, on my GitHub repo city. Yeah, so you could uh, you could check it out. Uh, okay, yeah. So I think I already opened the tab, and it's actually built by the Streamlit team itself. And um, you know, you you could just check it out, and then you know, play around with it. You need to install OpenCV and Streamlit, you know, to work around with that, to play around with that. All right, so the next demo I would love to show you is um, this app that was built by a friend of mine, right? It's an housing rent pricing app uh, for um, major cities in Lagos State. So say you are a newcomer in Lagos State and, uh, and then, you know, you need an apartment. Um, instead of you being ripped off, you know, by the, um, instead of you being ripped off by the, uh, you know, by the uh, agents, you can just come here yourself and try and evaluate the price, you know, for the kind of housing that you're looking for. So you tailor it to your preferences and then you try and evaluate the price for that. Uh, so you knowing the price, I think it makes it easier for you to negotiate with the uh, agent because you already have uh, the knowledge of how things work. Yeah, so let's say, you know, we could select a different uh, option here. I, I could select it for you. I could change this to mid middle range. I could uh, increase the number of uh, bedrooms to three, the number of bathrooms to, uh, to three, the number of toilets to three. I could select if I want to live in an estate, if I want to live in a terraced apartment, if I wanted to be a new apartment, if I wanted to have security guards, if I wanted to be a serviced apartment. All right, so having selected all my options, I'm going to select evaluate. And what do we have? Oh, out of bond, okay. Um, oh, okay. Um, I didn't know why we have that, but um, let's try again and see what comes up. Okay, yeah, so we have uh, an estimated price of 2,306,000. For this kind of house that we are looking for, and we have uh, a range of the, uh, the uh, we have a range of the price of houses, you know, in um, in uh, in this particular city known as Lekki. Uh, this this is the maximum price, which is five million, and this is the minimum price, you know, which is one point five million. I think this is quite amazing, and um, this was done in less than I think a little bit over uh, sixty lines of code. I think it's, it's quite amazing if you, you know, deploy the models in, uh, say, fast API or in the Flask, then you probably know, you know, the kind of uh, problems you face in uh, trying to do something like this. And you, you could testify that it's not always this uh, straightforward. And of course, you should keep it in mind that we have, uh, we have a UI. Yeah. All right. So finally, another demo I would love to show. It's not really a demo, but I would love you to check this out later. So it contains app that have been built by Streamlit uh, developers from all over the globe. You also could submit your um, 
application if you if you wish to do that. Now let's check let's check out for computer vision. So you can see lots of uh, you know human post estimation, neural site transfer, uh, parking spots. We can see spin mid space scan demo. Uh, yeah, so there are lots and lots of applications, and you know you could play around with them at your um, leisure. All right. So uh, moving forward. Um, so now I'm going to talk about the uh, cons of Streamlit. Why Streamlit might not be the ultimate solution for all the um, web apps problem out there. Yeah. So the number one is the convenience flexibility trade-offs, right? Because uh, Streamlit app start out most of the uh, most of the development process for you. So it also means that you you know you, you tend to lose a little bit of freedom alongside that, right? Yeah. So uh, Streamlit. Streamlit uh, is, is doing lots of stuff in the background for you, and uh, that means you might not be um, able to um, influence things or influence your designs the way you really want them to, because there's most times a, a predefined uh, a predefined uh, design, you know, for you to follow. Also, uh, another um, cause is the uh, size of uh, data input. Uh, before it was 50 MB, but now it has been increased to 200 MB. Um, yeah, and um, also there's limited support for video and animation. And believe me, this is this is not really a con anymore because Streamlit is fast. It's developing very fast, and uh, uh, most of these uh, problems are not really problems for Streamlit anymore. And also, you can build an app with functionalities like user authentication, which is not the case anymore because you cannot have user authentication on your Streamlit tabs. But you still can't have a newsletter subscription. You can't have uh, a chat room on your Streamlit applications. And if you want, you know, something like this on your app, then it might make sense for you to pursue, say, Django or Flask, you know, to build uh, something like that. All right. And even still, I believe that Python is simply not to use for every Python programmer. Uh, Streamlit is easy to use, you know, for every Python programmer out there. And I think this is, this is the big strength of Streamlit. And it is superb if you want that interacting data app very quickly. And uh, yeah, so finally, you have a comparison of uh, the tools that you need as a full stack Flux developer compared to a full stack Streamlit developer. And if you're a Flux developer, of course, you need to know to, you need to learn how to use Flux. And of course, you probably need to uh, know your way around JavaScript, HTML, CSS, JSON, right? Uh, but if you're a Streamlit developer, all the stuff you're going to need it's just stream leads. And then let's say you want to, you know, containerize your apps, then it makes sense for you to have a, to have a, a, a gasp, a gasp of, a, of Docker. All right, having said that, I think we are done. Thank you very much for listening to my talk. I really appreciate your attention. And uh, feel free to connect with me on um, on Twitter at Steve the Dead. So if you have any question, I'll be able to take it and say hi to me on LinkedIn. And uh, yeah, so bye everybody. Oh,